Hello students. In this video, we will be learning about oscillations and waves. Watching this video, you will be able to learn about simple harmonic motion and its characteristics, mechanical simple harmonic oscillator and complex and phase representations of simple harmonic motion. You might have observed the motion of some of the objects like pendulum of a clock, motion of moon around earth, earth around the sun and so on. What we observe in these examples is the body is repeating the same path again and again after equal intervals of time. Such a motion is called periodic motion. Periodic motion can be linear or angular. In this video, we will study more about this type of motions. When a body undergoes linear motion, we normally talk about how fast the body is moving, in which direction is it moving and so on. But when the body undergoes oscillatory motion, we have some other aspects coming into picture. Let us learn about these and the terminologies coming in these uh, type of motions. So some of the terminologies what we are discussing now are uh, going to be used again and again uh, in the coming uh, topics starting with the first terminology that is displacement displacement is uh, at a particular instant of time say some time t the distance of the location of the body from its mean position in case of linear oscillatory motion or the angle at which the body is located from its mean position in angular motion if you observe the image what is shown. In this case, there is a mass attached to a spring and it is undergoing oscillations. So, at any instant of time t, what is the distance of the mass from its mean position is called as its displacement or if you observe any circulatory motion or oscillatory motion, in that case, what is the angle covered by the body from its main position at any instant of time t is it called as its displacement. Next term is amplitude. What is the maximum value of displacement of the body from its equilibrium or mean position is called as its amplitude. Next is frequency. The number of oscillations executed by an oscillating body in unit time. How many number of times the body is undergoing oscillations per unit time is what is called as frequency. The unit for frequency is hertz. Next term is period. What is the time taken by the body to complete one oscillation? That is in case of the uh, image what you are seeing. If you start from the mean position, the bob going up, coming down and going back to the mean position is called as its one oscillation. What is the time taken by the body to complete this one complete oscillation is called as period. So we can have a relation between frequency and period that is given by t is equal to 1 by nu where nu is the frequency. The next terminology is angular frequency or angular velocity which is given by omega. This is the angle covered in unit time by a representative point moving on a circle whose motion is correlated to the motion of vibrating body. Here if you observe the image you can see there is a point which is moving on the circle and there is also a point which is mentioned as SHM which is undergoing vibrating or uh, oscillating motion. What is the angle covered in unit time by the representative point moving on a circle whose motion is correlated to the motion of vibrating body is called as angular frequency. The SI unit is radian per second. So, there can be a relation between angular frequency and the natural frequency nu what we already discussed and it is given by omega is equal to 2 pi nu. So, I mentioned every time the equilibrium position when I was uh, defining one or two terms previously. So, this equilibrium position can also be defined as the position of the body at rest and also the position about which the body is displaced symmetrically while executing simple harmonic motion. Uh, for example, if you consider a simple pendulum, if the bob is at rest, that position is called as equilibrium position or also you can say if it is undergoing oscillations, 
then what is the uh, point or the position about which the body is displaced symmetrically on either side or the bob is displaced symmetrically on either side you can call it as an equilibrium position. Knowing these terminologies next thing what we will be studying is simple harmonic motion. Before we move into the discussion of simple harmonic motion there is one more term which we need to learn that is called as restoring force. If you observe the image which is shown in the video there is a mass attached to one end of a spring which is attached on the other side to a rigid support. If you pull a spring and then leave it un to undergo oscillatory motions you will observe that more you pull the spring more is the speed with which it wants to go back to its original or equilibrium position and then we know that it is undergoing oscillations on its own and then coming to rest. What is that which is making the body to come back to its original position then undergo oscillation is called as restoring force. So, when a spring is pulled there is a force which is coming into picture which wants to bring back the spring to its original position. So, this force is called as restoring force and this force is directly proportional to the displacement. More is the displacement, more is the force with which the body wants to come back to its original position. Simple harmonic motion is the periodic or oscillatory motion executed by a body where this restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement and acts in the direction opposite to that of the displacement. So, if the body is pulled downwards then restoring force will act upwards. So, it is always in the opposite direction to the direction of the displacement that is why you see a minus symbol there. In terms of equation it is given as F is equal to minus K into X where K is the proportionality constant which is called as the spring constant or K can be also written as minus F by X. Next we will see what are the characteristics of simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion is a periodic motion. The oscillating system must have inertia which in turn means mass. There is a constant restoring force continuously acting on the body. The acceleration developed in the motion due to the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement from its mean position. The direction of acceleration is opposite to that of displacement and simple harmonic motion can be represented by a sine or cosine function such as x is equal to a sine omega t where x is the displacement at any instant of time t, a is the amplitude and omega is the angular frequency. Next let us see what are few examples of simple harmonic motion. To list a few are a mass suspended to a spring when pulled down and left free which executes simple harmonic motion vertically. Then a pendulum set for oscillation, excited tuning fork, a shock absorber after being bumped of a vehicle. In case of uh, electrical oscillations uh, that is in a LC circuit, the electrical charge move back and forth from an inductor to capacitor and vice versa causing electrical oscillations which are also simple harmonic motions in nature. Swings with which uh, children play, a plucked string in a veena or a guitar are some of the examples of simple harmonic motion. The next topic what we are going to discuss here is mechanical simple harmonic oscillator. In other words I can also say mass suspended to a spring with vertical vibrations. So, when I am talking about the spring here I am considering an idealized spring that is a spring which is assumed to be light, light weighted. So, light means when compared to the mass attached the mass of the spring is very less and there are no dissipative forces tending to decrease the motion of the spring. So, the oscillations go for quite a long time, long time means 
when compared to the period of the spring that is time taken for one oscillation the spring undergoes vibration for a long time and then the restoring force exerted by the spring is proportional to its extension and this extension what we are talking is small when compared to the length of the spring. So, if I consider such a spring uh, and whose upper end is fixed to a rigid support and let there be a mass m attached to it at its lower end due to which a load mg acts on the spring vertically downwards. The equilibrium level of the spring with the load mg is indicated as the position at rest that is uh, is equal to 0. Any displacement upwards from this is taken as positive and below is considered as negative. Suppose that a mass m is pulled within the elastic limit by a distance x then since the applied force is downwards the applied force will be minus f and uh, the restoring force will be acting in the direction opposite that is upwards. So, I will consider the restoring force as plus f and since I am pulling the mass downwards the displacement is in downwards. So, the displacement is taken as minus x. So, restoring force f is directly proportional to the displacement but in opposite direction. So, minus x f is proportional to minus x. In order to remove the proportionality symbol I introduce a proportionality constant k. So, the equation becomes f is equal to minus k x. If x is equal to 1 then k will be equal to f that is in negative minus f. But if I consider only the magnitude then k is equal to f without considering the direction. So, we can define the force constant as it is the magnitude of the applied force that produces unit extension or can be compression also in the spring while it is loaded within the elastic limit. And the time period of oscillation is given by the equation t is equal to 2 pi square root of m by k where t is the time period in seconds, m is the oscillating body mass in kg and k is the spring constant given in Newton per meter. Then the angular frequency of oscillation omega is equal to the square root of k by m which is given as radian per second. Then the natural frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi square root of k by m that is f is equal to omega by 2 pi. So, omega is square root of k by m that is why the natural frequency f is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of k by m. The unit for this is cycles per second or uh, in other words it can be hertz. So, what is the physical significance of this force constant which is also called as stiffness factor. Force constant is a measure of stiffness of a spring. It represents how much force it takes to stretch a spring by unit length. More the stiffness factor of a spring more is the force required to pull it or it is said to be more stiffer. The next topic is complex notation of simple harmonic motion. A complex number z has the form z is equal to x plus i y where i is equal to root of minus 1 which is termed imaginary. x is said to be the real part and is the projection of this z on x axis and y is said to be the imaginary part uh, which is the projection of z on y axis. So, the method of representing the complex number in coordinate form is called as the argon diagram what you see in the first diagram. The same can be also denoted in terms of polar coordinates uh, and the argon diagram representation can be done in terms of r and theta where z is written as r cos theta plus i r sin theta where r is the magnitude of z. If r is equal to 1 then z is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta that is what is shown in the second diagram. If we use Euler's formula then we know cos theta plus i sin theta can be written as e power i theta. So, z is equal to r e power i theta where r is the magnitude of z. 
if theta changes with time that is if the arrow r is a function of time t then theta is replaced by omega t and the argon diagram is as the third figure which is shown the arrow rotates about the origin with the angular velocity omega so z is equal to r e power i omega t if at t is equal to 0 z is already making an angle phi then z is equal to e r e power i omega t plus phi so this is the complex notation used in simple harmonic motion the next thing what we are going to learn is the phasor representation of simple harmonic motion or the representation of simple harmonic motion as a sine wave for this consider the figure where a particle is moving on a circular path of radius o p in an anti clockwise direction with an angular velocity of omega let the particle start from x and move over to p in some time t let a perpendicular pr be drawn to the diameter as p moves on the circumference of the circle r moves to and fro along the diameter it could be easily recognized that the motion of r is exactly the same as that of a body which is executing simple harmonic motion with o as the equilibrium position and oy as the amplitude what we observe from this uh, second figure is the same simple harmonic motion can be represented as a sine curve also for example the variation of a displacement of an oscillating mass spring system with time or variation of current or and voltage uh, in an ac circuit are all sinusoidal if you observe the figure as the black dot is moving along the circular path the projection which is represented by the red dot is moving to and fro on the diameter which is showing simple harmonic motion the same red dot is represented as a sine wave in the nearby figure so that is how we can represent the simple harmonic motion as a complex number that is z is equal to r e power i omega t plus phi the same can also be represented as a phasor which is given by r of angle phi is equal to r cos phi plus i r sin phi if we have to represent a voltage then we can represent it as v cos phi plus i v sin phi